Hi, I'm Maud Mosley. My pronouns are they, them, and welcome back to Tunes Tuesday, a weekly series where I sit down with queer, 2S LGBTQ plus musicians and bands to talk to them about their music, their experiences, and so much more. This week, New York City-based indie artist Julia joins me. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Hey, thank you so much for having me. My name is Julia. Um, I go by Julia with a G and a period for my music, um, but in my real life, it's just Julia with a J. Um, my pronouns are she, her, and I am, like you said, a musician and a filmmaker based in Brooklyn, but I'm from Toronto. Amazing. And I'm really excited to be diving into your music and filmmaking in this episode because I think there's so many like incredible aspects of that that have come up in recent months. And I mean, to start off with your debut EP, Night Before, was released this past June, 2021. And it's a soft and beautiful EP that includes the demo, Moon Please. What inspired you to include a demo on the release? Um, so the demo was a song that I recorded in like my first apartment in New York City. And it was like, a very like um, a very personal song to me, and I, I recorded it originally just like for myself. Like I loved it, and it was in my room. It was just me and my guitar, and um, it was almost so like it, it was it was so like cathartic, um, and I just fell so like deeply in love with the song and what the meaning. You know, I already loved the meaning of the song, but just like after listening to it, it um, just always like st uh, stayed with me so closely and. Um, when deciding to do the EP, uh, I had already made a video with it with a friend of mine, and um, I was like, I, like I wasn't going to include it because it sounded so much different than the other ones in terms of like the the quality of the the production. Um, but I was like, you know, screw it. Like this is such a this is such a deep like dive into me, and and so like what better thing to to put out into the world as like scary and vulnerable as that is I was like this is why I do it so it was like yeah I was like I have to I have to release this song otherwise I would be doing a, a disservice to myself almost so yeah. yeah I love that did you have like a consideration to re-record it or do you feel like you would kind of lose that authenticity and history of it yeah, I I tried to re-record it actually because I was like, yeah, thinking about maybe including this, but I have to re-record it otherwise otherwise it'll sound weird. And I tried and I was like, no, like it just doesn't sound as good. Like there was something so raw and, and genuine about the recording that I had, and, and it was the charm. And then and trying to re-record it would just lose that charm and that effect. So I was like, I can't, I just gotta keep the way it is. I think that's beautiful. And I think it's such a great point you make, though, about how vulnerable that is. I think, you know, especially it can be really scary to share, you know, music that you're like, is this perfect yet? Has, have, you know, all the hours been put into it? Has all the production been there to just be like, this is, this is me singing, this is me playing guitar, like, that is hard. But it's amazing to see that you decided that that was what was best for you and best for the song. Yeah, and it, and it surprisingly got like, the best um, response like of the EP or like one of the best responses like from people who listened they were like great EP but like moon please and it, it wasn't something that I thought like I thought it was just going to be like a random little like no one would really listen to it so it was really lovely to me that that people responded to it so well. Yeah it's really nice to see that other people kind of saw and felt maybe the same like value that you did in yeah. it that's that's really precious. Um, and then Baby Dyke is another song that appears on Night Before. Uh, incredible song. <laughs> I'm so excited to talk about it. Uh, it was released early as a single with an accompanying music video. And the music video itself is amazing. You know, it combines really funny and then kind of like sexy parts of sapphic culture, you know, from like putting on Crocs to like slowly <laughs> licking Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> and since you directed it yourself, could you share more about your original vision for the Baby Dyke video and kind of how it felt to make it? It was so fun to make. Um, originally, like, it was just me and some of my friends, like, completely just, like, riffing off of each other of, like, what if we did this? And what if they were this? And what if we... It was, like, so silly. And I was like, 
but like, what if we actually did that? Like, why, why could we not do that? And it was something where I was like, I just like, I'm such a, like a silly person. And I was like, I need this video to like embrace that side of me so intensely. And so that was like my goal going into it. Um, and I just wanted it to feel so fun and like free and like out there because that's what it felt for me. Like when I fully embraced, you know, my sexuality and like understanding that I could be like just whatever I wanted. And I wanted this video to do that and to just like, I don't know. I, I, I'm glad that you, that's like, I'm glad that you said that it was funny and sexy. Cause that's like, so what the, the, the like the, the song means to me in a way, <laughs> um, like those two sides of myself. So, uh, yeah, I, that was really just, I wanted to have a great time and, and uh, make sure that other people watching it had a great time. And so I hope you did. <laughs> yeah, well, I definitely think you managed to do that. And I think it's really great that you brought up that part that, you know, the silliness was able to be there because of this, like, you know, confidence in your sexuality. I think a lot of the stuff we see where a lot of queer content is like very serious, it's because it's a lot made out of like survival and made out of people like figuring themselves out and putting themselves out there. And, you know, sometimes we don't get to be silly because we have to focus on so much else. So I love the way that that connects to, you know, you being comfortable and proud. And I think that really relates to the lyrics as well. Exactly. And I, I mean, I thought about it for a while because I was like, you know, it's not like my, my coming out, if you will, was so like, it wasn't like I was immediately like, <laughs> I love it. Like, uh, obviously, like I, it was, it was difficult. And, um, but, but once I reached that point of like, you know, take it or leave it, like this is me. And like, I'm so joyous now. Um, that was the part that like really resonated with me that I wanted to, um, showcase, um, which is something that, that I also hadn't really seen too much of in queer content. And I was like, it's important to me that, that we see the joy um yeah yeah definitely especially if you're looking at like lesbian or sapphic content I mean especially at like a pop culture angle you know it's all about like yearning and being far apart and being like sad like just so sad yeah. <laughs> all the time <laughs> so I oh absolutely God, so much drama yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that angle. And I mean, just for fun, can you share what like your favorite part of the music video to film was? If you can pick one, I totally understand if you can't. Um, oh my gosh, it was so much, so many fun moments. But I love that you brought up the Oreo and the croc because that is my like really good friend Haley. And I was like, you have to do this. And she was like, no. And I was like, yes. And she was like, fine. <laughs> and it was like so just like getting her to do it was like so hilarious. And we were all there and it was like. Uh, we were like hollering. It was hilarious. Um, so that was definitely a memorable moment. <laughs> I love that. And speaking a bit about, you know, your lyrics, we mentioned the lyrics in Baby Dyke. You have a background in spoken word and have also made videos that, you know, pair your poetry with imagery and dance. How does engaging with poetry in the past and present impact your lyricism and the way you write music? Hmm, it's a very interesting question. Um, oh. I, I have actually never really approached um, lyrics with poetry in mind, or even my like writing background. I was always in creative writing and storytelling. And so that was always sort of where I was coming from, was like a painting, a picture, which you do in poetry, but I, I more so came at it from like a storytelling perspective. Um, and it, it was definitely, uh, I, I feel like when I write, it's I'm trying to be like the most specific that I can instead of, like uh using metaphors like I feel like I just uh say it um which has not always been the case but I found like that's where I find my best writing um which maybe relates to poetry maybe it doesn't but like 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. If this answers your question. No, no, it definitely does. I, I, I think I'm picking up the idea that you like approach these writing styles very differently, and they don't necessarily influence each other. I think like it kind of takes away from the. I feel like there's this idea that, or like joke, I guess I should say that you know poets are lazy musicians. Like they wrote songs that they didn't want to put the music to. Uh, but I feel like you're really like taking away from that joke and saying like, these are two separate mediums that exist completely on their own and engaging with them, you know, can be done in their own ways. Yeah. I mean, they totally can like coexist. I just, I've never really written, I mean, I have written poetry, but like bad poetry when I was like a few years ago, like we don't talk about it. Um, and so I don't know, I guess I just don't have as much like experience turning poetry into song. But obviously there, we know of so many um, poets slash lyricists who, who do that. Um, yeah, I've just, yeah, I've always just approached it with a different sort of mindset. Fair, I love that. And yeah. I, that is really interesting. And I have so, like really enjoyed speaking with you today. Thank you so much for joining me on Tunes Tuesday to talk about all these fun, sapphic music video song things. <laughs> Absolutely love it. If you want to check out any of the music or videos that we have been talking about, make sure to check out the links below and stay tuned for next week's Tunes Tuesday. Julia will be playing us out. Mm -hmm.